For the first time, we're introducing 16 composite fan blades to the G9X. We're trying to give our customers a more efficient engine. To do that, we've got to push the limits a little bit more than we have before. This year's Paris Air Show is an exciting time in the world of single aisle aircraft, particularly for the engine makers. Pratt & Whitney on one side and CFM on the other. Pratt & Whitney is here for the first time powering the Bombardier C-Series aircraft with the PW1500G. Already the C-Series is showing slightly better than expected performance figures, which augurs well for the future of the Pratt & Whitney powered fleet. The PW1900G, which is based on this engine, is just starting test work now in Florida during this Paris week. Meanwhile in Japan, the PW1200 version is now starting to do taxi tests on the MRJ. And in Toulouse, we also have the starting of the ground tests of the PW1100 powered A320neo. This was delayed slightly because of issues with a component which began in the end of April, early May time frame. But now the refined version of the engine is being shipped back to Toulouse where it will be fitted to the A320neo to resume flight tests in the coming weeks. In the world of big fan engines, the latest and greatest are here at Paris. Right behind me, an A350 powered by the Rolls-Royce Trent XWB84. Rolls-Royce is also currently building the first XWB97, which will be used to flight test on the A380 testbed for the A350-1000. That's the biggest engine that Rolls-Royce has ever built. For General Electric, the focus at Paris is very much on updating progress on the GE9X engine a giant 134-inch fan diameter engine which will power Boeing's 777X. The 777X is following in the footsteps of the 787 and the engine for this aircraft, of course, here is the GE-NX-1B. Much of the technology for the GE-9X is being proven right now in a version of this engine, the GE-NX, seen here on a 787. GE is using this as a test engine to evaluate the use of CMC's advanced uh, ceramic matrix material in the engine in a whole new way and also a titanium aluminide, a lightweight material that's been used in the low pressure turbine for the first time on this application. The combination of both GE hopes will not only improve the overall performance of the engine and its ability to operate at higher temperatures but also lighter and therefore making the entire engine more efficient. For CFM, for so long the focus of their shows here has been on this engine, the CFM 56. That's going to go to even more remarkable production numbers this year, even when the leap is about to take over. At the moment we're talking about over 1,600 engines to be likely to be produced this year, rising up to over 1,800, maybe 1,900 engines by 2018. Of course, the leap is following just behind. The first year we'll see 40 engines built, but by the third year alone, they'll be building 1,200 leaps. It's an astonishing ramp up and never before seen in the aero engine business. The first leap powered A320neo began flight tests in Toulouse on May the 19th and has been flying regularly ever since, sometimes on two flights a day. Meanwhile, the Leap 1B for Boeing 737 MAX is currently in flight test in California underneath GE's flying test bed.